Well, great. I was here for welcome back. I see another way for you to have me. I'm going to have 100 degrees. I'm going to have 100 degrees. I'm going Stay with us as I engage Honorable Setek, the former finance minister, on issues about uh, this, um, issues of concern that we're going to talk about. But uh, maybe it's just a, a daily graphic that I'm having, dear Nambabe. Of course, there is something in there that we'll be discussing with the Honorable Setek. Honorable, good evening. You're most welcome. Thank you so much for having you. Good evening and uh, good evening to your viewers and uh, listeners as well. So how have you been? Uh, let me... It's, it's, it's been a while. Let me apologize to the, your viewers who are used to. Mm -hmm. You know, I can. I hope that <laughs> you know, um, some of well. them will have their children around. And, that is, that and then well. those who also understand the English would, would follow mm -hmm. us. It's been, it's been well. Um, doing a few things here and there. <coughs> and so... I would say that I would thank God for. You so know, you're for into private life. business now? Um, I'm back into consulting. Basically, that's what I, mm. I, said, I started my career as a public servant in tax administration. Mm. And then um, after the VAT introduction, I <coughs> joined the IMF, fiscal affairs department. And you know, they do mostly consulting, mm. helping countries. Then I came back to be deputy minister and minister. So I do a little, some, some work, okay. you know, in that area. But I also teach. I've always taught. Mm. So I, I teach undergraduate and graduate students in the University of Ghana, <coughs> you know, uh, school of uh, business school. Uh, so that's what I've, periodically I, I do workshops and seminars. Mm. I just did one with Esther Young on um, tax for tax directors, mm. in, you know, in Africa. Uh, so those are some things which... So you're into consultancy, say. basically, yeah. um, aside yeah. teaching. Yes, you aside you teaching. consult for countries, companies? Uh, yes, for countries. Yeah, some companies, but mostly it is country work. It's not as forthcoming, obviously, mm. because of uh, conditions, you know, these days. But mm. countries, but we also do for, <clears throat> for example, um, if firms want to come into a country like Ghana and they want to understand the policy framework into which they are coming, either investment framework, tax framework, this doing business and all that, we, we give that kind of advice. Mm. The structure of government, <coughs> government policies regarding loans and other things. You know, yeah, those, that's the PFM, public financial management part of it, and then there's the tax, you know, part, mm. part of it. So since leaving office, have you consulted for any country? before um <coughs> i have yes i i did some work in um in liberia okay. when they organized an economic forum on a way forward you know for the economy uh, but i've also worked with african development bank <coughs> mm. on some country institute issues they're trying to revamp what they call the african development institute which provides advice you know, for countries. Mm. And then I also chaired, you know, a committee of the World Bank um, for what you call the PEFA assessment, public expenditure framework. Mm. That is a framework that they use to assess mm. the effectiveness of public administration. And from 2021, they are going to be, you know, improving on the framework. They do it every five years. Mm. So a committee of advisors. So I chaired that panel to, mm. <coughs> you know, to provide a framework for 2021 to 2026. Well, so if you can do this elsewhere, why can't you do that for Ghana? Are you consulting for Ghana as well? No, I don't consult for Ghana. Uh, why is it because? At the moment, is it because you belong to a different party? Is that it? Um. <laughs> well, it's, that's a question. We did. We. Well, usually you bid for these things. So let me say that we bid in conjunction with other, or sometimes uh, people approach, mm. other institutions approach, and then they want to use your services. Uh, so it's not that I have refused, or it's just that the bids, you mm. know, for Ghana in which I was involved, you know, have not succeeded. But have you been but invited? Have you been invited by any government official to assist in any way? Um, I better not. <laughs> Uh, not. I wouldn't want to, you know, to comment on that. No, but at least uh, politicians, you, um, before the cameras, you pretend as if you are enemies. 
but behind there you whine and die. This government has invited you before, haven't they? Let's formally. They've not invited you before. <laughs> not formally. Or you decided not to an invitation. I'm a consultant. Right. <clears throat> but if I if I offer advice to the World Bank of African Development mm. Bank, you know, it comes with benefits. You know, every country. So for example, if if I work on the public expenditure framework which I'm talking about, which mm. is used and one was done for Ghana not long ago. In my time we did I think two when I was a deputy and then actually the one we started this was was completed. Mm. So if they come to use the framework in Ghana, I would have contributed to my country. If I work with African development institutes mm. with the revamping that they are doing, we do webinars. For example, on we are going to do one mm. actually Monday, uh, so people might want to, you know, to log in African Development Bank, and we are going to look at the COVID effects on public financial management. <coughs> I'm going to be participating. Great, so, yeah. Mm. So in that regard, yes, I do contribute to my country. We are member states of these institutions. I thank you, Honorable. If you just join us, 100 Degrees is the program. On your TV now, we saw Ocean, Media India Sempa. Honorable Sektek, a former finance minister. Honorable, so what is your perception about the management of our economy as of now? Um, I, would, I would say that the economy should have performed better, in my view, you know, than, than it has done. Um, and this is based on, on, on figures and based on facts, so I don't want to be speculative. Um, first of all, yes, between 2012, effectively, mm. or November 2011 through 2016, we had the benefit of oil revenue. <clears throat> we were able to use it to do quite a number of things. Um, I'll come to some of them. Um, that's with one oil field. We left office with a deficit of 6.8 um, and debt of 50, nearly 56, 50, nearly 57, 56 percent uh, on a new basis mm. at the end of 2016. One would have expected a government coming in to inherit three oil fields immediately from mm. 2017. You know, crude oil prices were down at about 45 at the time we were leaving office. Mm. Uh, it rebounded to 60, and then it, it even topped, you know, at a point 83 before it came down. Mm. <coughs> you know, um, revenues who were, the output from one of the was 70,000 barrels per day. Mm. Today we are doing nearly 200,000 barrels per day. You know, if you add Jubilee, if you add Sankofa and Ted, you Jubilee. So one, it's, it's, it's not true that we left a weak economy at all. In fact, No, but you never faced COVID. Pardon? You never faced COVID. We, we faced a global financial crisis. Yeah, so but that can, is not COVID. No, we can discuss that. So let me just give my reasons why I am. You know, the COVID is a recent phenomenon. Yes, sure. Right? Yes. But I'm talking about performance from 2017. Mm. If you take the revision done by the fund, <clears throat> in 2017, we were told that the deficit was 3.7%. Um, <clears throat> remember? It's been revised to... Mm to 5.8, nearly 6%. Even that energy sector and, and uh, financial sector bigger costs were left out. If you added them, then it's higher. It's closer mm. to 7%, um, compared to 6.8. Then we were told 2019, 20, 2018, 2019, 4.5 and 4.7 and about. These are since been revised by the IMF and other institutions to 7.1 and 7%. As we speak, going to the end of 2020, mm -hmm. the deficit is supposed to be somewhere around 30%, 13%, sorry, 13% mm -hmm. <coughs> by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are in COVID. But then the cost of COVID was calculated by the government and given to the IMF in this document. Sure. And it says that the cost of COVID, at the time the COVID loan was mm -hmm. taken, was going to be 2%, 2.5% of Off. GDP. Okay. Right? And it's here. So you can verify for mm. yourself, 2.5% yeah. of GDP. Mm. So, and we're told that the deficit at the end of the year was going to be 4.9%, right? Yeah. So if you added 
if you added 2.5%, which was a cost for which we took the 1 billion mm. loan, mm. and then revised in the media review to about 3%. So let me grant it. If you added 3% to 4.9%, let's say 5%, you get 8%. Mm -hmm. So what accounts for the difference of 7? Remember the, the deficit is sure. about 8. I understand. So that has nothing to do with COVID. Mm. That has something to do with the real performance of the economy before COVID. And no, but, uh, but Honorable, if you have to explain the real performance of the economy as against the deficit, help us understand it very well. What brings about the deficit, first of all? Well, the, the deficit is the revenue which the government is mm. expected to receive by way of taxes, mm. by way of fees, which we pay to say DVLA and mm -hmm. the rest, mm -hmm. and by way of grants, mm -hmm. Which governments give us, this is what gives us the revenue in the gist, these three items. Mm -hmm. And then we spend on government employees. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we spend on interest mm -hmm. for the loans that we take. Sure. And then and the there were repayment, your repayment loans. of the, yes, yeah, yeah, we were service. Every government services yes. loans. Yes. Right? And then you pay for infrastructure. If you borrow, then you repay mm. before doing the infrastructure, mm. which is capital. And then we pay for running government offices. Mm. The difference between this expenditure and the revenue is what we call the deficit. Mm -hmm. It's a deficit when your expenditure is higher. Exactly. So it's like a household. Let's let's those who are listening. So so, so if your income, mommy's income, mm. plus daddy's income is you know, is less than where you have to spend, mm. then you go and borrow somewhere from a bank or from somewhere for a friend. So that's a deficit. Mm. And it's an important measure of the performance of the government. And remember you know, we were, we were told that we let, left a dismal economy at 6.8%. Mm. At the time, crude oil prices were falling. Mm. Remember, we had the tariff bearing and all those, you know, um, the lack of supply mm -hmm. of gas from Nigeria, which we call Dumso, and all those factors were hitting the economy. And, and you know, my boss was said, you know, to be a non-performer at 6.8. Mm. Mm. Now, fast forward with three oil fields and with all these, but it's accounting for 7%. No, but isn't it, is it not because government is, is doing more? It's doing more than the revenues that they are receiving. The expenditure is more. They, they promise a lot of things. They're doing it. The one district, yeah, they one said, factory, they said they raise the revenue one village, for it. one dam. Remember, they said they would raise the revenue for it. They didn't say they were going to borrow. Remember, they said they were not even going to borrow. Exactly. But yes. that's the reality they met when they were in opposition. They never knew that the economy it was that weak. Make, no, it can be one of two things. <clears throat> it can be one of two things. Like, if you are coming into government and you are promising, right, and you underestimate mm. the revenue that you are able, capable of generating, mm. right, then other means that you were not ready for the job. No, but you are also or, promising now. No, or, mm -hmm. of course, we did, we made promises, mm. and we did 6.8, and they said, Based on the promises now you are that making we, promises now for 2020 election. I'm saying, no, we, let's look yes. at performance, mm -hmm. please. Let's, we can come to going forward. Let's look at record. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's not confuse the two okay. so that our audience is not confused. I'm saying that, for example, we promise his schools. Mm -hmm. We promise stopping doing so and other things. Mm -hmm. You know, there were costs associated with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember single spine? We had to resolve it. Sure. It wasn't our policy, but we had to resolve all of these things. And we promised to resolve all of these mm -hmm. things. We promise we, we resolve some of them. As a foreign crude oil prices, we couldn't do all the secondary schools. Yes, mm -hmm. as you know, it's not every promise that will be yeah. made. So if you measure me on the basis of the promises that I made, right, mm -hmm. and I made a deficit of 6.5 to 6.8 percent, then you are saying I'm a non performer. And that you are capable of raising the revenues, you are not going to borrow, mm -hmm. like we borrowed. By the way, our debt will come to debt. Mm. Our debt level was 120 mm. billion, not 122 billion, it's 120 billion. Today Assets. we are, end of 2016. <coughs> okay. Right. Uh, today we are, debt is about 73, you know, sorry, it's about 63%. And it's projected by the end of the year to reach 73%. Mm. Some say it might even reach 80%. Right? But so you can let, see let, that. Let's stay so with let the me, let me, let's, let's just say, mm. Yeah, we, I'm, I'm on promises. Let, yes, yes. I'm on promises. Yes. We promise mm. what we could deliver. But no, but you, are no, you know you are all guilty when it comes to promises. 
No, but I'm saying that. No, we are talking about performance. It's not about yes, I, I, promises against performance. Yes. You also promised. And you admitted that you were not able to deliver. No, our they deficit... They also promised. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm not saying we, we were not able to deliver. Mm. We delivered better. You meant... It's relative. I'm saying that with what we promised, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. we performed. And at the end of our term, after paying for all those promises, after paying for single spine and all if, those if things... If you say you performed... The deficit, excuse me, the deficit was 6.8. Performance is in the figures, uh -huh. you know, and they said these figures were outrageous. You are a known performer. I am coming. I'm coming to do my, my promises, and I bet you mm -hmm. I'll raise revenues. Mm -hmm. Remember, you know, we will not even borrow mm -hmm. because we know how to generate revenue, right? And you come in, and I'm saying that. Now your deficit going to the end of the year, which is not disputed, mm -hmm. it's 11, it's now being calculated at 13 is, is it not also because... Excuse because me, excuse me, it's mm -hmm. at 13 percent, mm -hmm. right? Now, your debt, I was at nearly 56 percent, you said it was outrageous. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to end up at about, I'm saying, 70 percent mm -hmm. on new basis, right? So I'm saying that if you want to talk about and there's a yardstick for measuring performance. That's a run away from it. And those are the numbers I'm talking about. Mm. So the true state of the economy at the end of 2016 compared to with three oil fields, compared to one, with revenue which was less than uh, one billion, right, from one oil field, mm. to five billion. By the end of I'm quoting from the So, so if you years. have to describe the economy now in just, that's a, sing said, that's in just a single word, what would you say? Below par. That's what I'm saying. That if you look at the resources, and it's not true that resources were below not. par. Let me just mention is, is, two. Is, is, is that what you said? Yeah, two words. Yes. Um, two words. Yeah, not one. Below par. So, uh, but if economy you, is, is is one. Let me let me give you two other mm. two other instances why we're saying that. With a one oil field, mm -hmm. you remember the first sovereign bond that we did. Sure. That president could mm. <clears throat> because it was going to mature in 2017. We started paying down that sovereign bond with our own oil revenue mm -hmm. in, in a, on top of this performance. By the time we were leaving office, we had paid down 330 million US dollars of that bond. Mm -hmm. The first time, you know, Ghana paid its bond from our own revenue. Because we had oil, we put some money aside. We left 250 million. There was a balance of 200 million. Mm -hmm. The current administration used. 200 million US dollars of what we left, right? Mm -hmm. To pay the balance on October 4th, 2017, right? Mm -hmm. So if you say that we left a weak economy, a weak economy couldn't give you, couldn't pay down debt which you would have paid at 750 million. We paid, we, you know, we made a contribution of 500. To date, we have issued, apart from our bonds, which we had programmed to continue paying down, and in addition to the bonds that the MPP has issued, so they've not mm -hmm. redeemed one debt, one, one bond. Ghana has about seven bonds now, mm -hmm. apart from what we... And they've not re redeemed even one with three oil fields. That's what we did with, you know, um, the banking crisis <laughs> for which they, they accused. And remember, we did that now. Yeah. And before we mm -hmm. left office, mm -hmm. you know, we had actually paid 250 million grand, um, Ghana cities to the banks out of the first SLA process of 300, right? With what was left with an anticipated flow mm -hmm. of, of so much, mm -hmm. we refinanced 2.2 billion. Yeah. You remember? Yeah, 2.2. Yes. yes. Right. With 11 banks, without lots of jobs, without an institution going down. Today, SLA. No, but you knew the institution were me. weak. So you knew. You knew the banking sector was weak. You knew at the time you were exiting office. You knew. Is business not weak today? But you knew. No, there's a reason why business is weak today. COVID, right? Yes, of course. Yes. COVID. So there's a reason. We didn't tell why the banking sector was weak. Remember there was single spine? Remember there was uh, the no, global finance? You, you, you excuse could me. have done something no, no, excuse about me. it. That's what we did. That's what I'm narrating. It's not true that we didn't do anything. I'm telling you that, one, we did the asset quality review. Two, 
we revamped the Bank of Ghana law so that they can be uh, able. Mm -hmm. We did the deposit insurance, which is coming into effect. It was our law. And so because of all this, these were some of the things that we did. In addition, I'm saying we passed a law which was called a nuisance tax, if you remember, which will go away. And I'm saying that out of 250 million that came and anticipated flows, we were able to refinance for the banks. And those 2.2 owed by VI was taking off the books as a bad debt, mm. right? Uh -huh. It was restored. So we started doing something. We left a term sheet of 600 million US dollars, you know, to pay the IPPs. You know, and the, and the, and the so at the time you were exiting, was there a documented plan that any successive government can follow? It's just Def implement to save it. Definitely, definitely. You that's, had it documented. That's the SLA report. You, you, that is the SLA report. Mm. And so the SLA report, I'm saying, the 2019 SLA report mm. is saying that by 2022, SLA is going to bring in 28 billion Ghana cities. Mm since it was established in 2015, right? If the total banking sector debt, debt owed to contractors and the rest, assuming everything was 22 billion, and being, you know, mm. generous, mm. how come we cannot, you know, settle these, these arrears? And how can we say owing the procedures and the rest? As at, as at the end of 2018, I believe about uh, by the end of, by close of 2020, mm. you know, close to 24, uh, 20 or 24 billion would have been co you know, collected. I don't know, but just hold on for me. I need to go for a quick break. If you just join us on your TV, 100 Degrees is the program. My name is Asemba, Honorable Setepe, former finance minister, as my guest. When we return, uh, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, flag bearer of the NDC, started the promises and one of them is the big push how would they raise finances stay tuned we'll be right back all right obviously welcome back so see now joining our high on your tv 100 degrees you may be in august so i will share me your semper honorable setek by a former finance minister as my guest in the temperature seat the actual chain come do send your whatsapp messages zero five zero four seven seven one eight zero zero before the break you're making a point and i'll allow you to um, just round it off so that yeah. we can move to other. Yeah. So just to mention, <clears throat> of course, it's known that we put the same oil revenue into the stabilization mm. fund. Not much was added. That's why the cap. But there was so much pressure and on you. And 250 million the, US dollars. There was so much pressure on you as finance minister at the time. But You were so much under pressure. Sure. But we were anticipating crisis. There was pressure to use the money, yes. Most people said, even when the MPP came to power, remember, Th those monies were going to be used for free SHS, including the Heritage Fund, mm. right? Today, for the first time in a crisis, Ghana was able to dip into its reserves. That's the purpose of the stabilization. Were, were you a happy man um, at the time of the finance minister? Yes, I was. You're a happy man? Yes, I was. It doesn't mean that you don't have worries. If, if you prepare a budget with 99, you know, U.S., dollars and the price falls to 40 you know 35 dollars almost overnight of course you'll be worried as minister mm -hmm. but in terms of the initiatives and the reforms like the stabilization fund you know and managing to put aside money sinking fund to pay down debt start paying down our mm -hmm. debts and we'll talk about it you know a stabilization fund which today we're able to withdraw you know, 250 million US dollars. We were able to withdraw the 250 million Ghana mm. cities at the time, right? Infrastructure fund, you know, which was able to invest in Terminal 3. We had become a middle income country. Mm. And I must say that I was fortunate to have exposure in the Eastern European countries that joined the EU. And these were some of the measures we were making that they can mature, you know, into. So, yes, today I think that we are talking about inf 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 infrastructure and how to. Mm. We've been able to draw down stabilization fund. Hopefully, we now know that the time to prepare for a crisis is not during the crisis. The time to prepare for a crisis is when things are good. And so, that was exactly so. But I'm not taking the credit because if I didn't have the support of my president, there's no way in which, you know, many of. And today I, I, I would hope that if there's any judgment, you know, to be passed, it's his vision. We supported many of the things, 
you know, which Ghanaians should see. Mr. Tekbe, right? be, because be, let me let me make be, be candid. If you look at the policies that um, you churned out during your time, and you look at the policies that government is actually <coughs> following now, which of them do you think is the best for this country? Be candid. No, I'm talking facts. I'm saying I took. We reduce debt. They don't reduce debt. The graph is here. It's their own graph. The rate at which we were borrowing was going down, and it started going up. It's 20, this is a 2019 debt report. Mm. I'm saying that we put, we were able to show that when times are good, you, you must put some money aside. It's like a family, right? Right? It's like families have to do. If you get a bonus, you put something aside because you don't know what will happen, right? And that's what advanced countries and middle-income countries, the Chinese and whatever, you know, you cannot export, right, without export finance. So mm. you set up a zinc bank. You cannot actually do commercial infrastructure with a vehicle that borrows, not the states. But they want to see that you have a commercial instrument that can borrow. And the evidence is Terminal 3, which well, we are seeing. Mr. So, Tupper, let's, so, let's move on now. <laughs> let's, let's look at other things. Yeah. And I'm sure you've also heard about the Ajapa deal and you've been following. Um, <coughs> tell me. What is it about this Japan deal that the NDC is afraid of? Oh, no. We are cautioning the country. We are not afraid of it. We are cautioning the country. Rather, we are. What? We were. Remember, it's not, it's not fear. If rather. But, but it's what? It was boldness. Remember the performance of our members of parliament at the time, right? <laughs> People thought, yes, maybe that they feared something, that some big initiative or something was coming up. But they were bold in standing up for what for their beliefs, right? Some of us wrote early about it, and the, the facts that are coming out. So you wouldn't say that you do that out of fear. No. So no. What is wrong with it? <clears throat> if something is hundred percent government owned, what is wrong with it? Or there is something you know that we don't know. Well, we we <laughs> we have. Is it not hundred percent government owned? Um, if you take, there are three instruments that we're talking about. Sure. Yes, if you take the the. Mineral Development Fund mm. is 100% owned. Those sure. are the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is the only the first inf investment fund. Mm -hmm. We had the Ghana Infrastructure sure. Investment Fund, mm. which we were putting oil revenue. Mm. So yes, so it's both are 100% owned. The vehicle for the investment, mm -hmm. you know, which is a mineral uh, income investment fund. Mm -hmm. The name is quite similar to the Ghana, you know, uh, Infrastructure Investment Fund. You see the similarity. It's 100% owned. Our structure is also 100% mm -hmm. owned. But when you get to the market players, in Japan may be 100% owned. But we are not saying that the fund managers, right, mm -hmm. who are the ones actually playing, you know, in the market, mm -hmm. have some 49%, you know, which is not explained. Mm -hmm. That is when they flow the shares. Exactly. If they, they flow the shares, mm -hmm. the benefits, they say if you own shares, of yes. course, the benefits that come from the transaction ultimately, it means they get 49%. So when you talk about me only 100 percent the revenue which is going to come yes i'm going to get 100 percent but have we, look, have we looked at the bigger picture the benefit that we derive if we list it on the stock market no, we well if you them? go to the risk there's a country you have to go through that risk because remember um on the stock market our bonds are floated on the stock market all the bonds that we have done mm -hmm. we bought them from the stock market mm -hmm. they are floated on the stock mm -hmm. market on the irish stock exchange mm -hmm. New York Stock Exchange, so what is novel about, about that? We hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. but I'm saying from the Kufour bond <laughs> through, there was no Mills bonds, but the Mahama bonds and the uh, Nada bonds, mm -hmm. they are traded, they are being traded. On the stock market. So what is wrong if right. this one is also Ashanti traded? Gold shares have been padding. What is wrong? What is wrong is one that you are channeling, one, you are using a fund manager mm -hmm. who is taking part of the income. Two, you are channeling this whole transaction through a tax haven. Uh -huh. And maybe for the interest of your listeners, we would, a tax haven, right? That's another topic for discussion. Some yes, other day. That is, so, that's something that is, mm. you know, very wrong with, you know, with the, with the arrangement. Why a tax haven? And then, so, you are, so this is basically what is, what is wrong. Now we know mm. other things. This Other things like what? Of course, they're advised by the AG and whether or not it was taken in, you know, in good faith. That was, that was a very serious 
you know, document. No, that but was... we all saw that document that leaked on social media. That is not the only document. Yes, so that was the, the other documents. Yes. Remember, it was one of the objections with the minority race. Mm. When they were requesting that under Article 1815, if you are bringing a loan proposal or an investment proposal, international transaction, you must bring the terms and conditions. The, but terms of, the terms and conditions, they said, was not available. How come it became available on the web? Mm -hmm. It's not been denied. Right, the prospectus. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're saying that prospectus is, you know, was in draft and not yet ready. Yes, but, but have you but seen the doing... final document from the AG? Pardon, which... Have you seen the final document no, I'm not from the AG that came to them? I haven't seen anything. Apart from the ones that you saw? No, that went to the house is a summary of, of that went to the house. Apart from what is on the web, which mm -hmm. we are already now. You know, so hopefully when Parliament comes back in October, like the CSOs are also demanding, you know, government will have these copies. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they will take it to Parliament so that it can be proven as authentic and for the record. Do right. you foresee some so, individuals enriching themselves as a result <coughs> of this deal? I, I would rather wait for, I would wait, you know, for, um, speculation is not, because when I was in office, mm -hmm. I didn't like speculation. Of course, I took many things in transactional fund. Remember when we do... But there seems to be some we cartel did, behind this deal. No, let me just... No, let's talk about transparency. When mm. we did a Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, what did we do? We established a presidential commission. Mm. When we did the Ezin Bank, we established a, a presidential mm. commission. The Minister for Finance could have just, you know, even gone to parliament, even if you were transparent. The commission went around, took views. When we did the PRMA, we went around which led to the stabilization fund, the heritage fund, and all that. It took about a year for the committee to, to go around. So there's I no transparency the in this deal? The, one of the biggest issues is transparency. So long as the documents were not given to parliament, now we know why they were not sent to parliament. So at the point, you know, this whole thing was done by the majority without being transparent. So what would be the motive of government if they are shrouding everything in secrecy? There is no transparency. Well, I think we have some idea that maybe it will come, you know, in for criticism. Let me give you and why. What's the idea? Why? Why would they do that? Well, I, I, <coughs> I, I reckon that maybe that is what the answer we all, we all want because if you can... No, but at least you let, should know. You have been a finance minister. No, before. let me just say, let and me just say that. Let me just say that. Mm. If you have the opportunity to go to the markets and borrow in the transparent way that we have been doing, including the current government, for sovereign bond, right, and you choose to do something else which is less transparent. Is it because the debt levels that we are talking about, right, mm -hmm. the deficit levels that we are talking about, which is way, way above, you know, getting to 15%, is it because all of these things, the Fitch reports that are being issued, the scheduling reports and other things, uh, Moody's, and it, is, it, is it sending a wrong signal to the market? And is the market being close to Ghana, right? I remember Bank of Ghana had to come to the rescue. It's borrowing a difficulty. And is that why we are using an orthodox method? Should you have right. all the documents before you? That's what is required by Parliament. Yes. Should Under you, the Constitution. Should you have it now, September? These are the documents to the whole agreement and the deal. Would you look through it? Would you consider it? Or you of just, course, I've been reading. You just push it away. No it's, my, no, it's my duty to read. I've been reading all the documents. All I'm saying is that they haven't been given to us officially. The government has said this evening that they'll miss CSOs. So if the same documents are presented, of course I read. Because if I don't, if I don't read, what, out of annoyance, out of anger, or what? Should the NDC come to power, what will happen to this deal? Oh, my prime has said that it will be reviewed. You know, and let me give you one reason. Is it a review tax... or you will not respect it at all? It will be reviewed. You think, that, like it, review... you, you think that it should be reviewed? We reviewed the singles plan, and we came out with solutions. So you advise... We brought labor, we brought everybody. You advise when your you have a is that it should be reviewed. He has said it already. And he said he would not respect it. Yeah, which is... But by not respecting it, means that if the conclusion comes out... It means he will not, he will not review, consider it at all. No, I know he's But sad. you advise him to review. No, I'm saying... No, I know he's sad. He's sad to review. We have some benefits. But you have a document. There. You can't... No, you have a document. Remember, even some of the... Draconian terms, if I may use that word, in those words, in the agreement, right, may be binding on future governments, right, if mm. they have been concluded, right, so you can't just, you know, so saying that 
the document is, you know, is this just this other disrespectful of Ghanaians or something to that effect? It doesn't mean that. So, but I believe that if you review, because before he takes a position on it, yes, and that has been his time. You can see from Singer's Pine, there was a whole forum, Takwari Forum, and everything, which led to some legislation on wages and the rest, right? But what is worrisome, you know, with the tax saving argument is that Ghana, as we speak, I'm sure you know from me, that Ghana is under an uh, anti money laundering mm. list, or potentially. The decision was deferred. It mm. didn't come into effect immediately. It's supposed to come into effect in October, <clears throat> on October 1st, right, because mm. of COVID. Now, what is anti money laundering? It's like taking your clothes, dirty clothes, to the laundry. Mm -hmm. and washing them. They come out what? Clean. Yeah. Okay, so when you land the money, what happens is there's a drug money, right? Maybe smuggling money. Mm -hmm. The illicit things, you know, going against the law, smuggling and all those things. You make money out of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe GRE, when you face them, uh, yes, they will collect their taxes, but because you are offending the law, they will elect you know, a tax official. So usually the payments for these transactions are passed through countries, mm. including tax havens. And so when they say that you are an anti-money laundering surveillance, it means that the EU and OECD may have seen that and as your citizens, some citizens from elsewhere or businesses are doing illicit things mm. and they are using these tax havens, right? And this is what we mean by if tax savings are the ones that are used for these transactions, then the government is sending a signal by setting up a sovereign institution and registering it in the tax haven. Mm. And it may have consequences for them. So what would be your best advice to governments at this point on their JAPA deal? Well, they have a lot of advice. The AG has given a lot of advice. Yes, but uh, from your <coughs> side, what would be your advice? Yeah, we have said that they should respect transparency and they should you know, go back to Parliament and we have the documents. Honorable Sir Tepa is my guest on 100 degrees temperature seat. If you just join us, good evening. My name is Asempa. Uh, before we go for that quick break, um, your flag bearer is now promising um, legalizing Okada, uh, we told her free health care, a lot of promises. You are yet to launch your manifesto. That is uh, next Monday. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But one of the big promises, the big push, $10 billion. Where are you going to get that money from? We, <clears throat> I just said it. Remember I said that <clears throat> this report is showing that even though you see the debt going up, mm -hmm. nominal, mm -hmm. the rate at which you borrow, mm -hmm. you see this? Yeah, it was it. going down. Mm -hmm. You see that it started going if, up. If you can show it to the camera so yes. that my, my viewers... Now you can well. see that it has been going up. Mm -hmm. This is the debt report. Mm -hmm. This is from 2014 when we launched the smart borrowing. Mm -hmm. This is 2017 mm -hmm. when those policies were stopped mm -hmm. and the rate of borrowing started going up. Mm -hmm. This shows that during this period, the Mahama administration was doing all the infrastructure we are talking about, borrowing, but at the same time was able to reduce the rate of borrowing. So the record is there. But there was no 10 billion at the time. No, if you add up all of this, mm -hmm. well, if you, if you add up all of this, on average, Ghana borrows about $2 billion. Oh, So, so where years. would you get that $10 <coughs> billion dollars from? Oh, by making sure that we reintroduce the policies, lower the rate of borrowing, and we saw our interest rates going down. For example, the highest interest rate we did was 10%, but we had to do with, you know, other factors. By the time we were leaving off, it was going down to 9.5 mm -hmm. uh, and then also, if you see treasury bills, they were around 24, 25. You remember those days when you could put in treasury bills, that's government borrowing. So, number said, okay, you are going to raise $10 billion. How successful were you with a $3 billion Chinese loan? $3 billion Chinese loan? Yes. We were successful. We have the travel plans to show. How we successful? Have, we, have the, we have the gas, gas processing plant to show. We had the infrastructure around the gas processing plant mm. to show from the $1 billion that we took. We had the we have the communication equipment and things which the country uses today, today to show. Um, the reason the other... How much did you receive from the $3 billion? Yeah, $1 billion. $1 billion. <coughs> yes. And what happened to the 2 
of course, the, the loan, the loan and its release was pegged to the price of oil because what we did was when we sell oil, right, we paid. The money came to Bank of Ghana, that's the arrangement. And the process, which is a consolidated fund. So out of that, 2.5, sorry, 1.5, 1.25 percent. So, what, what were you asked to use as collateral for that loan? What were you going to use? The debt reserve account. That's what ah. I was explaining. Okay. I'm saying that where well, people think that we collateralize crude oil, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yes and no. You no, know, no in the sense that yes, the 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 companies picked the crude oil, unlike Kuku, where they went to process mm -hmm. themselves for the Buddha. Here, when they sell at Brent which is international global, not their price, mm -hmm. but at Brent. Mm. We make sure it was Brent's price, which is transparent, right? They will bring the money to Bank of Ghana. And then out of the money that we have received, which is our money, mm -hmm. we shall put 1.2% of the debt amount required for the debt service in the debt service reserve account. Mm. And then the one will be used to repay the installments. And mm -hmm. that's the arrangement that is ongoing now, right? Mm -hmm. So with those escrow arrangements, and reducing the rate of borrowing and others, sure, we would be able to go to the market. But if the conditions were <coughs> favorable, I think you should have brought in the two million, the two billion. No, the that's million. what I was explaining, that the projection of oil prices, that enabled us to draw down the one billion. But then we drew down the one billion. Remember I was saying you could have prices started to fall. Mm, okay, so the conditions and were so not favorable. It wasn't so favorable. Was no so need. they would have waited for, and there was even some discussion that we could we could uh, just like we are doing with you know with, with gold today. Okay, we, so we, we could, excuse me we could look at the proceeds from ten field and Sankofa and we said no. Okay so honorable you were not yeah. successful <laughs> with three billion. Um, we or, were successful. I'm mm, giving you the conditions no, which but of course uh, but you were not able to bring uh, three billion. No no if, if we went to one billion. No if, so, if, no, if we, you were not successful with no, three wait, billion. No wait a minute what when no when you are when you are acting on behalf of the people, sometimes you bear pride. Right? We could have mortgaged So you did that because of Ghanaians. Excuse me, we could have mortgaged you, ten you, you did that I'm because saying of that, Ghanaians. I'm telling you, no, I, I leave the judgment to Ghanaians. Let me just give you the reason. No, but you did that. I at said the let time. me yes, you let took me took the decision because you were thinking about that. Because we didn't want to mortgage ten field and Sankofa. Today we would have been getting revenue from ten field and Sankofa. And we didn't have been boasting that the, the, that the economy was growing at 8%. All that revenue would have been going. And we would have obviously gotten the money to this thing. But sometimes you make it slowly, right, to be able to, you know, to put this into effect. Okay. Right. Uh, so, considering... And moreover, how could you even determine, you know, the thing is in the soil? So how could you even determine the quality and whatever and all those here, even though there was some idea mm. from the exploration? So practically, now... Uh, Supposing you win this election, you come to power, <clears throat> you're supposed to raise $10 billion within four years for infrastructure development. Practically, I want to see how you'll be able to raise I was just $10 No, I was just explaining. <laughs> so if, if you let me go through the process, I'm saying that countries borrow, right, to do infrastructure. One, the instrument we put in place was the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. Mm -hmm. We put a seed capital of 200 million US dollars from the 2014 sovereign bond and further revenue from the ADFA. So you set up a structure. It was able to invest together with others in Terminal 3. Part of it, it's part of the investments in Terminal 3. So at least it shows a positive beginning. Okay. On the sovereign debt itself, I just told you that you are able to go to the market and borrow better if the market can see that. As you borrow, you are able to manage your debts, which was the difficulty we were having from HIPIC. So since HIPIC, and you can check the graphs and the data, since HIPIC, it's only the Mahama administration that reduced the rate at which we are borrowing, which has reversed. This is policy which I'm saying has worked, mm -hmm. right? So you bring in, we will restore the sinking fund, we will use it to pay down debt, right? So infrastructure fund, sinking fund, we would put the relevant amount of money in the stabilization fund as we were doing so that when we are hit by a crisis, mm. 
you know, then it doesn't come to a halt, you know, like we suffered. Then when you put in all these efforts, and I'm saying that we did that with domestic bonds, treasury bill rates started going down. Clearly, it was about 22, 23% or so. 22, 24. By the time we were living on it, it was 16.5. Right? And I'm saying that you can see uh, even the, our years, yes, they were going down. Then because of the crude oil shortages and things, we did 10.75. But the following year, because of these policies, the rates started going down to 9.5. Mm. So it's actually following a trend. So we are saying it is the package. Mm. And we are showing you the evidence that if you are able to put in these policies, you will be able to do infrastructure as we did. John, but with all the evidence you've shown us, if you have to rate yourself as finance minister, <coughs> how would you rate yourself? I'll leave that to Ghanaians. No, but of course. I teach. <laughs> so I don't, of course, yeah, my, so you, my student can be confident. When you teach, you mark scripts. So no, I, you can yes, mark I'm your not, own script. No, you don't mark your own script. <laughs> I'm not trained to mark my own script. No, but at least yeah, you can rate yourself. I am not trained to mark my own script. I give the evidence to Ghanaians. And but I'm saying, are, but, let, me but, show you, but let, me, say, let me take Ghanaians' the evidence. I'm saying that we left office at 6.5, 6.8. There was an offset anyway. We can talk about that later on, right? They said it was a bad record. We left office at close to 57% of debt. They said it was a bad record, right? Today, the deficit is inching towards 15%. So you can say you are better and finance minister. The evidence is there. For Ghanaians to so you are better I than what that. we are seeing now. <laughs> You're forcing me to give you some back. You're forcing me to say oh, something. No, but you. at least um, you are better than what we are seeing now. Per the I'm evidence that you've shown us. Uh, it's a so team? by the evidence. No, it's a team effort. Yes. If, the, if anybody was better, it was President Mahama. So that team is better it was than the leader team of the we team. have now. Yeah, obviously. That's why I can say that the team. The team has a better record than what we are seeing now. With one or three compared to three, remember. <laughs> Honorable Setekbe, former finance minister, <coughs> my guest on the temperature seat. Honorable, finally, just look into your camera. This one. And tell Ghanaians why they should vote for the NDC in 30 seconds. Oh, after all that I've said. Sure. The NDC has a better record. It is beginning to show. We were told you don't eat infrastructure. Today we are all competing to show that infrastructure is actually what develops, that creates jobs. It is infrastructure that actually goes to the health of the people. It's infrastructure that would have made free SHS more feasible if we had done the e-schools, right? If we had done the e-schools, I don't think that you would have children coming to sleep on verandas and whatever, not in boarding facilities. They would have, just like the U.S. and everywhere, you go to the school, you know, which is located, which is in your locality, and that's the idea. And so with all this, you know, with health infrastructure, people become healthy with roots and other things that we did, you know, it's, it leads to a better life. And so the choice is clear. And I'm saying we're able to do all this, and at the same time, this is a 2019 report. It's not 2016. It's showing that we're able to do all this Honorable. and still reduce the rate at which we are borrowing. I thank you so much. Grateful you join us this evening. I'll be here for Honorable September. May guest 100 you. degrees on the temperature seat. But India Semper, thanks so much for watching next week. Oh, yeah.